compared with the team uh, where they presented to us the strat plan and also the, the APP. So basically today's meeting is merely to get uh, a sense in terms of progress made uh, around the uh, indicators uh, and, the, and the outcome uh, uh, in terms of performance. Uh, we, we will therefore uh, uh, be looking forward uh, to hear from the, from the center. I made to understand that the delegation will be led by the Deputy Minister Chikunga, uh, together with the, with the delegation uh, will be Ms. Uh, Rukedi, that the Charles, there will also be uh, and then um, um, the choir, uh, then the ministerial staff uh, and advisors, that, that is what I was told. Uh, so uh, we will be guided in terms of uh, uh, whether the DM has logged in already. Uh, I can see that the DM has logged in, that we extend a special word of welcome to her. And uh, given the role that uh, she's playing in the, in the department, and also this uh, entity, that's one of the entity that uh, uh, is accountable directly to the to the Department of uh, Public Service and Administration. Allow me to give over to the uh, Deputy Minister uh, to uh, give. Uh, uh, and opening remarks with regard to, to the work of the center. Over to you, Minister Chikunga. Thank you very much, uh, Chairperson. Uh, uh, I will switch off the camera for maybe better reception. Let me acknowledge you, Chairperson, and members, honorable members of the Select com Committee. Also acknowledge the exec acting executive director for CPSI, a senior manager from CPSI. A chairperson, um, the Center for Public Service in Public Sector Innovation as government component has been instrumental in entrenching a culture of innovation in government and other relevant national and provincial and local agencies. As you will know, Chairperson, the CPSI's mandate directly supports the National Development Plan in building an effective, efficient, and development-oriented public sector and an empowered and inclusive citizenship. I'm certain that members will agree with me that COVID-19 enabled us to identify systematic challenges, weaknesses, which required innovative solutions to fast track service delivery. It compelled us to find new ways of operating whilst giving rise to the need for innovation and technology more than ever before, particularly in the public service and of course in other sectors as well. There have been various innovative solutions that have been replicated throughout provinces as a result of the work of the CPSI. This has highlighted the importance of an ongoing practice of innovation as a critical part of transformation and reform in the public sector. It has enabled us to find new cost-effective ways of adding value to the existing systems and practices and to replace them if need be. So honorable members, the purpose of the meeting today is uh, invited by the Honorable Select Committee is for the CPSI to present their annual report and performance information to the Select Committee. Honorable members, I'm pleased to report that the CPSI achieved an audit for the year 2019-20 financial year. In terms of their performance, they achieved 75% of their annual targets out of eight targets for the year under which they could not achieve two of the targets. This could have been as a result of challenges they have been experiencing, which the ex acting executive director will explain. Let me at this moment, Chair, uh, 
hand over to the executive acting executive director to present on the performance information. I thank you, Chairperson, and thank you, honorable members. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, uh, Deputy Minister, for that uh, uh, overview in terms of the work and thereby also laying the foundation for the executive director to uh, proceed with the presentation. Over to you, uh, executive director, Rukeri. Good afternoon, honorable chair, honorable members, and deputy minister and colleagues. Thank you for the opportunity. I'll just switch on the video for two seconds so that you can put the, the voice to the, to the face. Thank you so much. I hope that my presentation is visible from your side. It is, it is, it is, it is visible. Thank you. Um, it's not a long presentation, but in the presentation, I will cover um, a few things. Uh, obviously, the deputy minister has in, already indicated the report of the Auditor General will give an overview of the performance for the annual, uh, uh, the year 2019-2020, um, zoom into a, a highlights, uh, more into the targets that were not achieved, human resource information, and touch uh, briefly on the annual financial statements. Uh, as indicated, yes, we did. This is our third uh, clean audit, uh, conservative three, uh, for the past conservative uh, three years, we've been achieving a clean audit under very strenuous uh, circumstances as we are a very small outfit. Uh, currently we have about 26 uh, uh, field posts as we have some, some vacancies. The next slide just indicates uh, our achievement. Um, our, our targets are quite small as you'll see from the budget that uh, the budget as well is not, uh, is not big. So we managed to achieve 75% of, 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 of our targets, missing two uh, targets, but I'll give more details around that. On this slide, it, it just shows under program one, but I would like to highlight that uh, by the end of the financial year, 100%, uh, we had implemented 100% of external audit recommendations from the previous financial year. So by 31st of March, we didn't have anything that was outstanding uh, for based on what the AG raised as concerns. Um, the two targets that were not achieved are those, but I will elaborate more on them uh, in the next couple of slides. Uh, if you allow me, Chairperson, to proceed, I will go back to this slide in more detail later on. But some of the slides that we, uh, the targets that were, uh, were were, were achieved are those. Uh, the, the following slides will also give more information on, on, on the slides or on the targets that were achieved. Sorry, sorry, uh, uh, sorry for disturbing uh, the executives. Can, can we have the slide uh, uh, bigger if uh, the executive director oh. can the slide show? Okay, sir. Put it okay. on slideshow. I hope I'll be able to do that. Uh, it's not on slideshow. No, you just move up your cursor. Up, okay. Up. No. <laughs> yeah. You can see slideshow. There is a slideshow. It's it's written slideshow. Up. Up, 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 up. I don't yes, see. Up, oh up. yes, there. Yeah. Okay. And is then it you right go, now? And then you go to from current slide. Current slide up, up. Okay. You see current from, slide, current slide from. Uh, okay. Thank you for that. <laughs> Thank you so much for the lesson. I learned something new today. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Now um, I need to know how to move the slides. Okay, I'll use the 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 the, 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 the shift button. Um, mm. just to give you more detail on the tables that I've just shown you. Or uh, under program two, uh, as indicated by the DM, this is what we're trying to do to try and improve, uh, you know, service deliver through innovation. And uh, we do that in various ways. One way that we do it is through the replication program. With the replication program, just to give you a bit of background, what we do is that we, we identify solutions, innovative solutions that we then take from one 
uh, setting to the other, from one hospital to the other, or from one province to the other. So in the year under review, 1920, we actually successfully replicated a maternal health records project, which we found in Prince Michel Hospital in KZN, and then we, we replicated it in Betha We would like to replicate wider, but we are limited by capacity, things that I will touch on later on, and also by budget in terms of how much we can do. But this project that we replicated, actually, uh, if, if you ask in the health sector, maternal health records, similar to records of accidents, they actually disappear in hospitals because most of the litigation that comes through, it will either be through a maternal death or the death of the baby during birth and so forth. So we zoomed into maternal health records based on those uh, risks that when the file is lost and the, uh, the hospital or government is taken to task legally, you find that we are found wanting as a hospital because the maternal health records would be nowhere to be found. So this innovation was not a very advanced innovation, but it, it secured, it makes sure that maternal, you can actually trace who took the file and when was it brought back and so forth, just to make sure that if there's litigation relating to that file, we are able to trace where the records are. So that's one that we replicated successfully in that particular year. And uh, under research and development uh, of solutions, as I indicated, we missed two targets. The one target, we couldn't develop any new solutions because we had a, a solution that we were working on with Home Affairs, which took longer than we anticipated. So we had to um, zoom into that Home Affairs and make sure that it's, it's actually completed. And sometimes innovation projects, life cycle, are not, don't fit within one year. That's one of our challenges that we face, that when you deal with an innovation, uh, sometimes it can take six months for you to move from development to a full solution. In other in instances, it actually take, takes years in terms of finding a, 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 a piloting and then finding that that solution is ready to be implemented. As it is now, even in the current year, we are still working with Home Affairs. It's only now in uh, 2021 that we were able to pilot. So it shows that the life cycle of an innovation project actually doesn't fit within the reporting requirements. Sometimes we are late because of things that uh, un unintended, uh, un un unintended consequences when you try to pilot a solution. Uh, one can also use currently with the vaccine uh, for, for the pandemic. Scientists have been working up till now. There are some that say the vaccine can work for this variant, but it won't work for this variant, and we're still trying to find solutions. So it's a very good example of how difficult it is to bring an innovation from a development stage to full scale. It's very, very challenging. Over the past uh, two conservative years, we, we, we've been supporting uh, youth uh, digital skills. Uh, we work with organizations like Geek Culture. I'm not sure honorable members you are aware of, of this um, organization, a youth ICT development organization. We, we hold hackathons to, for them to come up with solutions, but we still have a challenge. Solutions that are coming out of uh, this area, working with youth, it's very difficult to bring them on board in the public service because of various things. One is supply chain rules. When you procure anything in government, you are supposed to get three quotations of, if it's a tender, then you must put it out on tender. But then you meet a young entrepreneur who's working on a solution, which is still in development stage. It's, it's, it's not possible for you to ask for three quotations of something that's still being developed. It's not like when you purchase a bottle of water, you know you, you have 500 mils, it must uh, be distilled and, 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 but with development solutions, it's very difficult for one to define them. So it's a challenge, yes, we support them, but we are still talking to treasury in terms of how do we bring this um, into the public service. Um, working again with the Department of Digital Technologies, they are also facing the same problem. I think there's somewhere they are working on a document on, of how to, to make sure that we are able to take these innovations 
in, 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 in government. We have ways of, of trying to do that, but it's a very tedious process where we work with, for instance, the Innovation Hub that is based in Gauteng. We enter into a, a, a memorandum, memorandum of understanding with them. We give them money for them to source these solutions from the youth, but it takes time. Again, you are limited by, by, by uh, uh, finance prescripts and so forth. Uh, innovation also strives on partnerships. It, and, and under this point, I just want to emphasize that we work with, uh, as I said, the Innovation Hub, but we also work with the National Advisory Council on Innovation, which is um, a formation of the Department of Science and Innovation. We actually did a rapid study with them uh, to see the status of public sector innovation in the country. But in the coming uh, financial year, we will be actually doing an in-depth study with them. The first one was a desktop research, just to throw fillers in terms of what is happening in that in that space. Um, we also provide uh, you know solutions, as I said, to try and improve you know um, a, a, a service delivery. Yeah, I want to give an example, honorable members, that we work with frontline departments so that they can leverage, you know, just give you a current example where CPS has been working with the Department of Correctional Services for quite a number of years. And in, in the past year or so, they actually took some of the innovations that we, we, we shared with them in the e-learning space. They actually implemented those solutions even before uh, the pandemic, where they are rendering some of their lessons to the prisoners uh, through e-learning platforms. So by the time the COVID hit, they were actually ahead because they were already using e-learning. That's an example of how CPSI uh, provides institutional support to departments to leverage innovation. Not an easy process as well, uh, but we, we, we do try as much as we can. In terms of um, internationally, we work with uh, Organizations like the UN, um, uh, uh, OECD as well, very strong partnerships with them where we share knowledge and we share innovations and so forth. We also have internal innovation knowledge platforms. When you talk, we talk about innovation, innovation and knowledge management go together because you'll agree with me members that if you, you have knowledge about how you can solve one problem, if you don't share it with other people in the space, they may end up seeking solutions while they don't know that you have actually solved the problem. So we use our innovation platforms to make sure that we, 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 we inculcate the current practice of innovation. We share innovation approaches, you know, thought leadership from across the globe, uh, solutions that we come across so that we avoid uh, in, uh, reinventing the wheel. Um, just a snapshot of such in the in November 2019, we held a conference, but this conference, we said we don't want a, a talk shop. So what we did, we introduced um, mini technique clinics that focus on a field called design thinking and then foresight skills. So we had uh, the theme was public sector innovation, design thinking and foresight to accelerate the achievement of government's uh, seven priorities. And out of that uh, conference, actually, public servants became interested to an extent that in the next slide, as uh, I will indicate, we actually have now are hosting design thinking skills workshop for, for public servants. Another program that we have is the awards program, which, is run, which runs the whole year. Here, I want to emphasize that we use our program, the awards program, to find some of these innovations, uh, because it's very difficult for you to know what is happening in KZN, uh, but when you ask them to submit their innovations, then you are able to go through them and see what is coming out of different provinces. We award them, but later on, we take these projects into a replication program. So our awards program doesn't end with the ceremony where people are giving trophies and we say bye-bye, we'll see you next year. We actually take those projects into the year, the following year, as part of our, of our annual targets to make sure that we, we replicate those solutions. We also have a journal that we are now uh, publishing online, as I indicated, uh, public sector innovation workshops, which now focuses on giving public servants design thinking skills so that they can start solving their own programs. Uh, as indicated, those two targets were not achieved. Uh, I just wanted to emphasize the last bullet that that innovation that we're trying to replicate, unfortunately, it was a, a special project that we 
we focused on because it targeted uh, children with disabilities, children with cere cerebral palsy. Uh, this innovation is uh, physiotherapists at Paraguana came up with what they call standing boxes. Standing boxes are there in the market, but very pricey, anything from 3,000. So it leaves out people from disadvantaged uh, areas. So the physios then decided, why don't we find a partner that can assist us to develop much cheaper uh, standing boxes so that actually we can reach children with disabilities that are from a disadvantaged um, the only reason why this was not achieved is that there was a delay in manufacturing and um, these uh, standing boxes were only uh, reached the physical application side during the second quarter of 2020-21. Uh, they were supposed to deliver by the 31st of March 2020, but unfortunately we were caught up with uh, a delay in manufacturing. In terms of the state of, of the human resources in the department, uh, for 1920, we had a staff turnover of about 6%, uh, as indicated, one appointment, one transfer out, and five contracts ending, and one secondment ending. And uh, uh, currently, we have 26 posts that are filled, and we have two employees additional to the establishment. Uh, within the year 1920, unfortunately, our vacancy rate increased 5% uh, compared to 1819. Uh, this is because of the four vacant posts that uh, we couldn't fill. Uh, minister then uh, indicated that we need to uh, reposition the organization. So we, we held on on filling of posts so that we can uh, review the organizational structure uh, and see whether we can increase capacity internally uh, to, so that we are able to carry our mandate. I must say, uh, honorable members, the, the targets that were not achieved those units are very thin. Uh, in terms of replication, we have only one person who runs with replication. And in terms of solution development, we have one person. So it's, it's very challenging for them to be able to achieve their targets because we are very, very, very thin on the ground. Uh, one key post that's been vacant is that of the executive director. As you can see, it's been vacant from the 1st of October, 2018. There have been second months, and um, from February 2020, I've been acting in the position to date. And we are hopeful that uh, before the end of the financial year, this critical post will be filled to allow the executive director to move the organization uh, forward. Uh, some of the information that we'd like to share is that in terms of employee, pre employee performance management, we've done everything that we're supposed to do within the, uh, the timelines. Um, ICT capacity remains a challenge as an innovation organization. This is a concern for us. Mm -hmm. And into we, we will be entering uh, into a memorandum of understanding with the TPSA to increase our ICT capacity. Because again, currently, we only have one person to support projects in terms of ICT and also to, to support um, desk to do desktop support. So you can imagine if this resource is sick in ICU and we have done time, then we are in trouble as an organization. So we, we're trying our best to make sure that we mitigate against this um, in the proposed new structure, which we are still uh, um, get seeking approval to state to look at our proposed structure, which actually increased capacity in program two and also increased um, propose that we have more posts in ICT to, to mitigate against all this uh, risk. In terms of finances, very briefly, honorable members, um, our expenditure, yes, it was uh, just uh, almost 78%. Um, under compensation of employees, we had uh, 953 um, under spending because of all those vacancies. Um, so we had to give the money back. Um, those four posts, including the, the vacant post of the executive director, then it, it costs underspending in uh, this uh, compensation of employees. Uh, under goods and services, expenditure as well was very low for the, very, uh, for the following reasons. CPSI used to have its own offices in Centurion. We then relocated to the TPSA Batopili building where we are. And that money, that 4 million plus, we couldn't use it 
in that financial year because we had moved here and we were initially not paying rent. So we had a, a save, I don't know whether to call it a saving or not, of about 4 million, which led to the uh, lower than um, uh, envisaged spending. Um, because we, we wanted to do certain things like to do tenant installation, to upgrade infrastructure, but because there was a pending organizational review, we held back on those um, expenditure items until we are sure where the CPSI is going. So we had a saving where to return the money. And computer services as well, we, when we moved to this building, we couple of months up to July, we actually were doing our transactions at CETA. So we had to use CETA offices. So CETA was not charging us for this transaction. So there was a bit of saving as well in that instance. Uh, travel and accommodation, um, we also made a saving there. Uh, our award ceremony and the conference were combined in Gauteng, so it led to more savings. Uh, we also saved a lot on non-employee foreign travel, as we used to host a, a workshop with the UN, but unfortunately, because of loss of, loss of capacity, we had to let go of that, um, of the, of, of that um, uh, expenditure. Uh, and during, again, during the... 2019 awards uh, ceremony, we didn't hold the finalist workshop, also led to some saving. I must say, honorable members, moving on, we actually, if it were not for COVID in the following year, our expenditure could have been different. Uh, but in this year, those were the uh, cost drivers or uh, that led to us not spending as intended. We held back on the revamping of the website as well. We published our journal online, so it led to more savings. Some of the savings are um, like the transfers and subsidies, machineries and equipment, an amount of 479 was low. The expenditure was actually lower than anticipated. And I think in this slide, it's just, you know, final stuff where it shows where the savings, what is the spending uh, compared to program one and program two. As you can see, program one, 70% and program two, the expenditure was slightly higher than uh, program two, program one, uh, excuse me. And this uh, just expands on those um, economic classification in terms of the expenditure. And here we just unpacking under program one, those are the three units in program one, the under expenditure was actually in corporate resource management. We also have a vacancy there. Uh, under that uh, uh, sub program. In program two, the expenditure was not that bad, um, as you can see, above 82% in the core uh, program, which is public sector innovation. But obviously, because corporate resource management was low, it actually brought the, the expenditure to 77% for the, for the year. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Executive Director, uh, for, for that presentation. Uh, I will now uh, uh, get an indication from another members in terms of uh, the engagement with the, with the presentation. Uh, <clears throat> but indeed, uh, uh, you must be uh, uh, commended for the, uh, the three years uh, of clean clean audit. I think that that's a step in the right direction. Keep the good work, keep the good work uh, up. I've noted uh, the the end of Honorable Matibula. Uh, over to you, Honorable Matibula. Uh, thank you very much, Chair. Uh, my first question will be, what is your department plan to lead the, in the innovation and uh, development in South Africa that will lead to the large scale industrialization or change the way in which the state delivers service? As we speak now, manufacturing continues to decline with millions of people facing Restrictment in all sectors. Number two will be 
What is your department plan to implement the construct the construction of high technologies institute, which will teach innovation and research on technology with the aim of innovating technological instruments and gadgets in South Africa? Thank you, Chair. Thank you, uh, Honorable Mate Wula. I've noted Honorable Hai also. Over to Honorable Hai. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Honorable Chepesi, and uh, also thanks to the DM uh, for the opening remarks and also to the acting executive director <coughs> for the presentation. So let, let, let me start also on the issue of the acting uh, executive director. Maybe the, the DM can, if he, if he can assure us, because um, the executive director is saying that, uh, that uh, by the end of the year, we will have a, a full-time executive director. We, we need the assurance from the uh, DM uh, that that will definitely take place because uh, um, uh, I mean since uh, 2018 uh, without having an accounting uh, office uh, I think it's unacceptable uh, this second man from uh, presidency second man from uh, the department it's unacceptable we really need a full-time person in that uh, particular position uh, secondly uh, <clears throat> with regard to the uh, to the performance uh, indicators. Uh, let me first start with the administration. Um, we would like a situation where the, the administration targets are broken down uh, to just have a, a performance indicator in the form of uh, developing policies. And then when you've developed those policies, then you said that you've achieved we, we want those policies to be broken down. For example, in terms of a uh, human resource, I know uh, there's a section that deals with human resource, but we want those to be brought to under administration. They can stay there under a human resource when you want to, to, to deal, uh, 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 to give more details uh, under, under, uh, under a human resource, but they should also be an administration with specific uh, uh, performance indicators and targets. For example, <clears throat> with regard to the, the the vacancy rate, the fact that it's just in the in the in the in the under human resource uh, section, the, 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 there are no uh, there are no performance indicators. It just says uh, the the it just says the vacancy rate is 13, and you don't know what is the target uh, of, of the entity, where does it want to go to, which target from that 13, because now it's not uh, 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 being measured, it's, it's just there as a 13%. But also if you look at, uh, at the uh, uh, PowerPoint presentation uh, of the executive uh, uh, director, it, it talks about a uh, 6% uh, of a uh, uh, staff turnover. But if you read the book, the, the annual uh, uh, report, the book itself, it, it talks about a uh, uh, 13%. So we need the clarity, which one is right, which one is wrong, because the book says 13%, but the PowerPoint presentation it says uh, 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 6%. So we really need clarity with regard to that. Also further, Chair, that's why I'm saying that uh, the, the, those targets, I mean, those uh, issues around the uh, administration need to be broken into performance indicators. We need to know what is a target, for example, with regard to women in the senior management positions. We need to know uh, what targets uh, you have around the, 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 the issue of, uh, of the ICT. Uh, what targets are you having so that, you don't just say there's a challenge on, on the ICT. We don't even know what that challenge is. So, so that is another question Chair, that uh, the executive director must tell us what challenge is she referring to? Because in, in the both in the in the report, uh, the book and also the uh, the PowerPoint presentation, 
it just says uh, there are challenges in the ICT without exactly explaining what uh, are these challenges. So we, we need further information with regard to what are these challenges and uh, what is it being done uh, to, to correct uh, those, those, those challenges. Um, but also with regard to uh, uh, employees uh, with, uh, with disabilities, we need to know what are the targets and uh, whether those targets uh, have been achieved. But also the other one is the, the, the government 30 day period for payment of uh, service uh, 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 providers. If uh, the, the, the service provider are paid within the stipulated uh, 30 day uh, payment period uh, uh, by government. So we need to know all that information so that it's not only just a uh, couch under, uh, under uh, human resource policies. That's why we need to, to have those uh, broken down into uh, performance uh, uh, in indicators uh, with targets. And uh, also uh, the monitoring and the disclosure by the SMS and, and designated uh, employees with regard to the possible conflict of uh, interest. We will need to know whether there are any disclosures, how many of the managers have signed uh, those, those disclosures. Chair, in the book, there's a talk about the, the shifting of funds, which amounts to 207,000. Um, it, it talks about the a damage to a hired car. Uh, we, we need a more explanation uh, with regard to why was this hired car uh, not uh, insured? Why now the entity has to pay about six thousand uh, for the for this hired car? But also there's a there's a there's a also another claim uh, that was paid to an employee. There's no indication as to what this claim uh, was was all about. Um, chair, and <clears throat> we we should, I think. Uh, I, I think we need more information with regard to the moratorium on, on the employment as to why there was this uh, moratorium on filling of the vacants, which are funded. Uh, that's why now there's an underspending uh, on, uh, on, on, on human resource. Uh, we don't understand, we would have understood if it, uh, these uh, were not funded posts, but these are funded posts, but then there was a moratorium as to why those uh, posts uh, uh, were not filled. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm interested uh, on under uh, a public sector innovation program uh, on the issue of the info uh, at CPISI, uh, where uh, it is used uh, to lodge uh, complaints, and then those complaints are forwarded to the executive member. I, I assume that the executive member at a national, uh, provincial, and also at a local government. I would be interested to know whether there is a feedback uh, from those uh, executive members back to uh, the CPI, uh, uh, the yeah, the the the, the CP, uh, I guess, so that uh, uh, the also feedbacks uh, to the complainants. Uh, I would really like to know if we, uh, th that happens. Um, Just, uh, just a minute. Uh, on the audit and risk committee, I, I, there was a report from the acting chairperson, uh, uh, Ms. Pumla Mzizi. Um, I, I just want to know why is, is, is she acting? Is there no uh, full-time chairperson uh, for, for the audit and risk committee? Thank you very much uh, for allowing me th uh, the opportunity to ask the question. Thanks, uh, Chairperson. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Honorable Hai. Uh, Honorable Tim Bratisa, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Chair. Uh, Chair, I must apologize for joining the meeting late. We had some power issues here in uh, Etigwini in my area, so I had no signal. Um, I did manage to catch most of the um, the presentation there, and I want to thank the presenter for the work that is being done. I think that uh, they must be commended for 
the, the clean financial record. But the questions I just I want to ask a very simple chair. They just relate to the implementation of the Public Administration Act um, of 2014. Um, I see there are still challenges with work being done by officials with the state. So officials doing business with the state. Um, because one of the strategic objectives is to build up the, the level of ethics in the civil service. But we still have the problem of officials doing work with the states. And I think in one of our previous engagements, we, we, we established that only one person since that act was passed has actually been prosecuted, only one. So I'd love to get the, the impressions on, on the one hand, trying to build up an ethical civil service, but on the other hand, uh, what seems to be a, a climate of no consequence whatsoever, how that actually works in terms of getting it. And, and would, the, would the entity's hand be strengthened when on the one hand you're teaching ethics, but on the other hand, you are actually, you know, the students, as it were, know that something will happen if ethics are breached. And, and if how they if they can comment on that environment and, and how we need to fast track the the mechanisms of, of the public administration. The other thing that I want to raise, and I must admit I raise this all the time, and I will keep banging the drum until finally we get some sort of action, is the establishment of the ethics unit, that, the, that very long-worded integrity and ethics uh, professional ethics unit within the Department of Public Service and Administration, and what role this entity is playing in terms of, of getting that, uh, that unit up and running so that we can actually implement what we are teaching students about ethics, we can actually implement it on the ground. Thank you, Chair. That's all for now. Thank you. Honorable Musodi, Chair. Thank you, thank you, Honorable uh, Tim, Honorable Musodi. Uh, thank you very much, Honorable Chairperson. Greetings to the DM. Let me start, Honorable Chairperson, to applaud the department about the clean audit for three years. Uh, my first question, Honorable Chairperson, I just want to add on the issue that was raised by Honorable Hai the issue of acting executive director. If maybe it's possible to the DM to give us a time frame, because I think it's of concern to us if the department is having this uh, high position in acting. Uh, the second question, Honorable Chairperson, is on the issue of the mental, mental record file that have, have been lost. I just want to check if it's possible how many uh, files did this cover that uh, maybe uh, this file was lost in, in, the, uh, in the department, Chairperson? On the issue of 26 posts filled by department, if maybe they can just tell us amongst these 26 posts filled, how many people, how many women in that post, and how many youth, and how many this disabled people, Honorable Chairman. I think the most question was asked uh, on, uh, by Honorable Hai, the issue of the vacancy rate for us is a concern. I'm not going to even uh, uh, repeat it, Honorable Chairperson. Thanks for now. Thank you, Honorable Mshori, uh, for that, uh, for those questions uh, uh, to, the, to the team. Uh, let me uh, ascertain as to whether uh, are there are any further uh, questions from other members. Uh, maybe just uh, uh, two from my side. Honorable Chair, seem to have lost you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, my apology for that. <laughs> I just want to 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 uh, ask the 
the, the team to elaborate further on the, uh, the 2019 highlights. There is a referral to the continued support uh, to uh, young people with regard to digital skills development uh, through hackathons. Uh, I think uh, it, will be, it, will be, it will be important for, for uh, young people uh, uh, across the country just to get a sense uh, uh, what does hackathons entail. Uh, so that at least uh, uh, there is an appreciation uh, from the young people that indeed uh, uh, there is a, 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 a clear illustration on the part of the of the uh, uh, government to to bring them on board in terms of the information uh, uh, and the communication technology. The, 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 the second point relates to the, uh, the emphasis that was raised uh, around, around, around the importance of awards, uh, particularly with regard to inviting uh, provinces uh, uh, to uh, put uh, to the fore uh, the, uh, the innovation uh, uh, program. I, 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 I'm interested to get a sense uh, in terms of uh, uh, just in a, in, a, in a nutshell, what were those uh, uh, in, 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 I mean, initiatives in terms of innovation from the, the, the provinces and take, uh, and then the, 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 uh, the uh, just to get a sense from the from the center in terms of uh, its broader broader approach to to uh, also uh, bringing on board the local governments here uh, uh, to this uh, innovations, particularly given the importance of uh, of innovation to improving uh, the, the public uh, public uh, sector. But, but, but more than that, uh, the, the support uh, to, to strengthen this year, has there been any interaction with the, with the, with the center, uh, with the, uh, with, uh, with, with, with Salga? Uh, are there any interaction probably with some municipalities? Uh, the, 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 the last one relates to the, the uh, challenges that you raised, that you raised around the, capacity and the memorandum of agreement uh, between the TKC and, uh, and, and the Center for Innovation. Uh, uh, how far, how far, how far is that, how far is that, uh, is the implementation of that uh, MOU, particularly with regard to, to, the, to the, uh, the capacity challenge that you have raised because uh, Suspect this one definitely uh, the DM will have to 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 to, to give clarity on because uh, uh, you have raised ICT capacity as a challenge and the expectation is that uh, from the presentation the the MOU between the center and the, and the department will uh, will be used as a as a platform to sort of uh, bridge this gap of capacity challenge. Over to you, uh, DM and the team. Sorry, Chair. Chair. Yes, Tim. I'm terribly sorry, Chair. I'm I'm uh, I'm, I'm being very rude. <laughs> I I just want to know if I could possibly ask one further question that I forgot. Um, no problem. If no I problem. may, Chair. Yes, Thank you so much. I'll be very quick. Um, Chair, just to 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 the presenters. Um, I understand obviously that great strides are being made in terms of educating and training and skilling up existing officials. But does this entity at some point envisage a future where, and I compare this to a country like Malaysia, where if you want to enter the civil service, you must have a minimum level of academic qualification. In other words, there is actually a, uh, I'm not sure if it's a, 
if it's a diploma course or a even a degree that you're actually required to enter the civil service. Uh, obviously, that's that cannot be done right now because we have so many people in the civil service. But do we foresee a future where maybe 10 years from now, 15 years from now, 20 years from now, if a young person wants to actually enter the civil service, they first have to actually study to be a civil servant and then only may they actually enter the civil service. Um, could, could we just get comment on that, please? Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Tim, uh, for, for, for that question. Uh, maybe just the last point from my side. Uh, uh, one of the targets uh, that was not uh, met relates to that uh, program of, uh, I think it was attributed to putting too much emphasis on the, on the home affairs. Uh, home affairs program, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, it, it, I think that the reason why I'm attracted to this point is informed by, by uh, every time I pass uh, home affairs offices in Kuruma, in the Northern Cape provinces, uh, from, uh, from uh, uh, seven o'clock right up to three, you will see a long queues uh, of uh, of people from the villages queuing just to just to uh, apply for either ID birth certificate or birth, or birth certificate. I want to get a sense in terms of how how will this uh, home affairs uh, innovative program assist assist in terms of uh, 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 mitigating. The, the queue on the line because that is the sense that I get uh, that uh, uh, the idea is to sort of uh, uh, deal with some of those challenges. Then the last point at the provincial level, the provincial level, uh, particularly from the offices across all across all provinces, uh, which mainly uh, will uh, be the, the center, the the, the, the the center uh, where innovations across all departments will be coordinated. I'm interested to get a sense in terms of what is your plan with regard to, 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 to your interaction with the with provincial departments, uh, particularly to ensure that uh, across all provinces, uh, this uh, uh, need for innovation is driven. I know that uh, from the province where I come from, the premier always talk about uh, a, a, a modern uh, growing province uh, with uh, innovation at the center of it. And amongst them uh, was for the first time uh, 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 this year, uh, the application and registration of, 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 of students, uh, application of, of, of peoples and learners were done, were done on, on, online. And this to a certain extent, uh, assisted uh, our, our, our communities from queuing from midnight when uh, 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 opening for application uh, is, 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 is now uh, available for, 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 for applicants. Thank you, dear. No, thank you, Chairperson. Uh, I, I will respond to the easiest questions and the executive director will respond to others. Chair, let me explain that I think mid-year last year, to be exact, it was in, in August, we received a presentation from the Department of Public Service and Administration that was suggesting to us that CPSI should be absorbed into the Department of Public Service and Administration. Out of that presentation, we then felt that maybe we need to do some work before we take such a decision. And that is where we then embarked on a process that we refer to as repositioning of CPSI. And it led to a process that CPSI is now undertaking that of reviewing the organizational structure of CPSI. 
If say we were deciding to absorb CPSI into the department, some of the positions that we're talking about would not have been necessary because it would have formed part of CPSI and therefore you might not need an executive director. However, a decision has already been taken to say, we do need CPSI as an entity outside the department, because if you in, absorb it into the department, it will be a, a responsible for setting norms and standards and not be implementers of innovation in terms of replicating solutions and so on and so forth. They are now under, I mean, uh, involved in the process of submitting a reviewed organizational structure, which looks into the mandate of, 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 of CPSI. We also have agreed with the minister that they will have to submit also a, a submission that says, these are the posts that must be filled soonest than others. I've also recommended to the minister that it will be proper that we appoint the executive director permanent so that as we appoint other staff, he, he or she is part of that process. And that is the movement we're waiting for that submission. On the organizational structure, we have seen it. We have therefore directed the CPSI, in fact, the submission is in the office of the minister. I've recommended that they've got now to undertake the normal process of approving any reviewed organizational structure, which will mean that it goes to the Department of Public Service and Administration. And therefore the minister look into that, not from a point of being an executive authority responsible for CPSI, but as the MPSA minister responsible. And therefore that outlook sort of approach in the reconstruct into the reviewed organizational structure of CPSI. We are in that process. We've looked at the funding model. We've looked at the business model of, of CPSI, the skills that they require added to that. And also they are in constant uh, conversation or communication with national treasury because there might be a need for more budget for CPSI if it has got to perform its work as expected, and of course, its mandate as expected. We are in agreement that we cannot do away with an innovation center uh, at this time of the year or age uh, in South Africa and in the world where you need innovation. So that is why we have had some of these vacancies taking long to, to fill. I want to believe for sure a uh, chairperson that when we come in the future, we'll either be saying we've advertised the post, we've shortlisted, we've interviewed, or we have appointed, depending on when exactly we're going to come back to you. In terms of the regulations for a post to be filled, when you start the process up to the end, it can take up to six months or not more than a year. However, we will want, as soon as the process starts, to shorten the process so that we have people appointed. But what is accepted is that a, a, a duration that it will take. So I just want to, to say that, and that is why we have had these posts being vacant for quite some time, because when you review and you deciding on where the structure or the, the center should be or any institution should be, you cannot at the same time be appointing people because what if you will not need those positions? Now this concrete decision to say we need CPSI, which I believe is an important decision and we need it not within the Department of Public Service and Administration, which is important. We have also said, unlike what it is now where it is occupying offices within the department. We have said they've got to start now looking for a center so that physically speaking, they are a center. They have got an innovative center where public servants can come and see the solutions that they are uh, 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 making or whatever 
in order for them to be a center, not just offices and so on. So that has already been said, and we are encouraging them to start engaging with the Department of Public, I mean, uh, public, what is this, DP, DPWI, so that that process can now unfold. Because for now, they are having offices. We say they must be a center, and that decision has already been taken. And that is where we are at this moment, Chairperson. Uh, coming to, and that is why then we have those vacancies, and we hope that as decisions are being taken, we will be filling the post. We also feel that there are critical posts that must be that must be uh, uh, filled soon as soon as possible. On questions that were asked by honourable team, I want to believe he said he's in, in depth and, and, and therefore I wish those questions were directed to the Department of Public Service and Administration than CPSI. I'm not very sure, Chair, whether you'll want me to respond to them. Uh, I wasn't ready to answer those questions. However, if the questions are about, for instance, what we are doing about officials that are, are doing business with the state, we have on several occasions been responding to this question. We have explained that we get information from PESA, but also we're getting information from, um, uh, what is this, the, 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 the center that keeps records of people that are owning uh, companies, and we get it from Treasury as well. And we have indicated that we have written to departments to alert them about the fact that in your department or in your province, there are so many officials that in terms of the information are doing business with the state. We also submitted in that information to SAPs with the names of officials to say the SAPs must look into that. But we have also said to departments, they must assist SAPs by investigating all those issues. SAPs came back to us with a much reduced number after checking everything. And we have had meetings with SAPS, with NPA, to say that those, that those officials that are confirmed to be doing business with the state, they must be charged criminally. But also we have informed departments that over and above this being a criminal, this being a criminal offense, it is also an, a misconduct and therefore they must be charged within departments for a, 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 a misconduct and disciplinary process must unfold. And we, we are in constant communication with departments. I must indicate that I think about two weeks ago, the Minister of Public Service and Administration together with the Deputy Minister and the DG, we addressed FOSAD which is a committee of DGs, including DGs from provinces on all these issues. This one included, but delayed disciplinary cases um, and other issues that we've picked up to say this they require to be addressed by, by DGs and we need to get feedback as to what they are doing about those cases. So yes, but I think this question would have been proper if it is directed to DPSA than to CPS. I am just giving highlights, but really it's not a detailed information that I believe the select committee will require if we appear before them as DPSA being prepared and ready to respond to, that, to those questions. On the issue of the role of DAO, I also believe that that should go to DPSA on the issue of training of officials and minimum requirements. Uh, we do set minimum requirements, if I were just to say it in passing chair. Um, for instance, if you must be, you must apply for a position of a DG or a DDG, you must have an honors degree. And, and, and if you don't have, you cannot be uh, employed uh, as, as a DDG. For instance, we've had some provinces, KZN for instance, uh, interviewing, shortlisting and interviewing people. And, and, and at the time of them being appointed with the promise that they have qualifications, they don't submit the qualifications and they've not been appointed because the requirement of a DTG or HOD is that a person must have an, a, 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 a degree. 
depending on what we employ a person for. If say, for instance, we're employing a nurse, surely a nurse must have a qualification, must be a nurse. If you're employing a teacher, the teacher must have a qualification. So yes, there are minimum requirements. In departments as well, depending on the position and the post, there are minimum requirements that are set for each and every position. And of course that happens in, in departments, but for those that come to the DPSA, none will pass DPSA if they don't meet the basic requirements. That will be the DGs and DDGs that are approved by DPSA before they can, the department can appoint them. In fact, it is DPSA that will take them to cabinet for cabinet concurrence if it is a DDG and it is a, 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 a DG. For chief directors, that is actually done by a, a, a departments, including DDGs and DP and, and DGs, but for those, for them to be approved, then they, they come to DPSA for concurrence and that person must have a minimum require, requirement, but also depending on the, on the, on the, on the, on the specific qualifications, we look into that. If say, for instance, you need a DTG for maritime transport, for instance, that DTG must have a, 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 a diploma or a degree or a, 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 an honors degree in maritime as a basic degree, but also as a, an honors degree, because that is now a specific a, 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 a technical position that the DG must occupy. That is what we are doing. We can do better, but that's what we are doing for now. I think that will be on these questions, but Chairperson, I, I will say again that they will be answered more specific with more information if they are directed to DPSA than to CPSI. Thank you, Chair. I will hand over to the acting a, a, a executive director to respond to our questions. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Gia. Over to you, executive director. Thank you, honorable chair. Thank you, thank you, DM. Uh, before I start to respond, uh, uh, honorable chair, uh, some of the questions will be responded to by my, my colleagues. So I will indicate who will respond to what. I just want to add uh, from where the DM left off in terms of uh, uh, you think that uh, before you enter the public service, you you have to you have a qualification to be a public servant. There's currently the National School of Government has issued a framework on professionalization, which is out for comments now, and I think that's part of 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 making sure that we hire the right people. I just wanted to raise that and inform uh, uh, honourable members about that development. I think it's still open for. For, for comments. Uh, in terms of responding, the first two questions, I hope I got them right. That, that the question that spoke to manufacturing and construction. I just want to indicate that um, as, as the CPSI, we are actually focusing on innovations that would then improve service delivery. Uh, remember, in, within the national you know, uh, system of innovation, we have partners like the Department of Science and Innovation that would then focus more on innovations in this space. We work with them, but only relating to uh, service delivery, direct service delivery, like working with hospitals, working with home affairs, with police stations, with correctional services. As, as, as an organization, we've not delved into these areas because we know that uh, Department of Science and Technology is in that space as well. They work together with uh, trade and industry. Um, in terms of the other questions, uh, we, we note uh, the question around that the performance indicators must be broken down to be more specific to ensure that when you report, one can, can check uh, the, 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 the compliance. In terms of e-disclosures, uh, thanks for, 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 for that, honorable member. Uh, we will make sure that in our next presentation, actually I've made notes of things that we need to include in all our presentations to make sure that we cover all the areas when we report to the select committee. Uh, disclosures uh, for the CPSI for 1920, we didn't have any conflict of interest. I just want to indicate to members that CPSI only has five SMS members now uh, because the, uh, the post of the ED is vacant and all five we, we did submit, but there was no conflict in, of interest in all the e disclosures of the department. Uh, the DMS responded to the issue around the moratorium post. 
in terms of uh, complaints that we get in info at CPSI, it's actually, um, uh, they are not similar to those that you get to uh, when people call the presidential presidential uh, hotline. The kind of complaints that we get here, it will be, it would be, we are related to issues around innovation. It will be an official who would say, uh, for instance, some of the complaints that we get is they would relate to the slowness of 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 of, of GPF in processing uh, pensions, and we would then refer them to the public service commission or to the presidential hotline. If they do come to us, we will then refer them to the right people. I know GPSA as well handles some of these complaints, but I must indicate to, indicate to other members that we don't get a lot of complaints um, as as as, as CPSI uh, regarding that. Uh, in terms of why the uh, Audit and Risk um, Committee chairperson was acting, what happened is that uh, the, the, the contract of the chairperson ended before the end of the year. And because we are sharing our audit committee with DPSA, we had to make sure that the processes, it took a bit longer for, for DPSA to, to find audit, um, uh, audit and Risk Committee members. So that, that's why we ended up with a, an acting um, a chairperson, but now we have a full-time chairperson that has been appointed. It was just for a couple of months that it was uh, like that. Uh, in terms of uh, mental health records, from the uh, project manager, she indicated to us that up to 50 files, 50 files were lost per day. So that project actually kept uh, the loss of, of, of files. Uh, the next few questions will be responded to by the uh, CFO, and that will uh, respond to the vacancy rate uh, question. She will respond to the 30-day uh, uh, payment uh, period. She will also respond to the issue around the damaged car and indicate why we paid an employee a certain amount of money. Um, she will also give stats in terms of women, youth, and, and people with disabilities. Annette, over to you. Thank you very much and good afternoon. Um, on the first question on the vacancy rate, the 13% as presented in the annual report is correct. It included um, a three post uh, that was additional to the establishment came to an end. Um, and the 6% that was presented in the uh, presentation is uh, was more on the, uh, uh, the, the uh, fixed uh, post to the establishment. Uh, in terms of the 30 days, we've got a very proud record of processing all payments within uh, four uh, days after receiving the invoices, and um, we are continuously trying to improve on that. Um, in terms of the uh, payment that was made to, to a former employee, it was an uh, arbitration award that was granted uh, to the employees, as well as uh, leave, uh, uh, leave gratuities um, of um, the employees that left the, um, the organization in 2019-20. Um, um, in terms of the uh, disability rate, we've got uh, two uh, employees, um, which is representing 7% of the organizational structure, and currently 60% of the folk posts uh, are presented by, by women in the organization. Um, I think that was all my questions. Thank you. The last one about the damaged car. Why was it not in short? Oh, sorry, yeah. The damaged car, um, the Treasury regulations doesn't allow departments to take out insurance for uh, uh, hired vehicles uh, because of the small amount of it. The losses is, um, are assessed uh, when and um, if they occur. Thank you. Thank you, Annette. And Mr. Piers Kwanrat, who's responsible for research and innovation, will respond to the ICT uh, uh, challenge. He will respond to the digital skills, explain what hackathons are, and also give uh, honorable members a, a bit of information about the Home Affairs uh, project. Over to you, Pierre. Uh, good afternoon, Chair, Deputy Minister, and honorable members. Um, uh, just before I answer the the questions on the hackathon and ICT capacity. If the host could perhaps just allow me to share my screen. 
uh, then I will be able to demonstrate to members the work in progress on, on home affairs. Um, uh, thank you, thank you very much. I will share now. Um, with regards to hackathons, uh, Chair, in essence, um, it is a coding marathon. Um, we bring together youth, those would be still students. Uh, we have youth as young as 15, 16 participating still in school, as well as postgraduate students uh, who then uh, over a period of usually 48 hours right through the night would work on a specific challenge in a team set up and then they are uh, supported by a number of mentors. Uh, we use the hackathons to have practical skills that are transferred um, and our role is specifically to focus them on public sector related challenges. Uh, so we work with CETA, we work with NEMISA and various departments who are hosting hackathons and we host our own as well. Um, and then we try and support those uh, solutions to then be developed further. And, and I think that touches on the question of Honorable Matevula as well, is uh, we have taken a stance to involve our youth and specifically our young innovators developed by the Innovation Hub and the TIAs and our other entities uh, to bring them in to address uh, the challenges within government so that we don't have to outsource these uh, to large organizations or multinationals or consultancies. Um, it does mean it takes longer and the home affairs is one example, um, which I would uh, like to share um, uh, with members as well. Um, uh, and and um, if if you can share my see my screen, I think it does answer uh, the question of the chair. Um, at the moment, Home Affairs does not know what the service delivery status is in each office. Um, so what we're trying to build with them is real time monitoring of the status, and we're currently doing that in two offices, uh, Bronco Sprite and Pretoria CBD, and we are looking at their overall compliance in relation to their own set standards, risk issues which are normally picked up by the Auditor General, and then their service delivery compared to their standards as well as value added services and the operational efficiency. Um, they've measured how fast the process should happen and we simply measure then. Um, uh, it is uh, a project that has human elements um, so there are soft behavioral issues that we need to address. It's not just about building a system um, but at a glance Home Affairs will be able to see on a map um, what uh, the level of service is. So if there's a green, it's above 70%. Um, they will also see a breakdown at the top uh, best performers, the worst, worst performers. Uh, they will be able to read comments from the branch manager, what is happening at the, um, the, the um, site. And they will be able to break down the services. For example, if you look at the photo booths, are the photo booths operational? What was the uh, percentage lost in service delivery? Um, the queue management system, is that working? And that touched on the question that the chair has asked, uh, is it functional? What is the um, operational efficiency? Our staff at counters, the help desk, as well as uh, smaller issues that are normally audited, like is there a first aid kit? Is the safe functional? Uh, is there a meter greeter in place? Are staff wearing name tags, all the emergency contact numbers uh, displayed, et cetera. Um, so this is the work in progress. And obviously the minister and the senior management will have a different view than, for example, the operational managers. Um, and at the moment we are busy plugging this in into the actual home affairs system so that we can withdraw the, the real time data um, it will also then send alerts, for example, if the ICT system is offline uh, to the relevant people. Um, at the moment, uh, branch managers report after the day um, and only 50% of the report um, and the monthly reports are also not up to date. Then Soma first approach us uh, to deal with this. Um, Chair, I think that is, that is just at a glance. Um, 
uh, at the moment we we're busy sorting out all the unintended consequences and all the soft issues um, so that we have a system that is working and working well. Uh, in terms of IT capacity, as you can see with this uh, project, it, it, it leverages current business intelligence um, software and the application thereof. There are security issues and so on. And from our side, we only have one person um, that has uh, the necessary qualifications and the second person that has a very strong background uh, in the organization. And the CIO is both responsible for internal as well as the service delivery issues. And therefore there's a need identified by the minister and the deputy minister for us to build much stronger uh, development capacity and ICT capacity. We work with a number of developers within government um, and uh, solutions they are bringing that are saving government millions and we're trying to then support. Um, and that touches on the question around the awards. Um, incidentally, in the year under review, um, Etiquini Municipality won the CPSI Innovation Awards uh, for a, a WhatsApp solution that the engineering department put in place. Normally it's not their job, uh, but they created this direct communication line with citizens. Uh, so um, uh, state entities as well as local government are actively participating in the awards as well as provinces. Uh, we travel to the far corners of this country to find very innovative, sometimes not I solutions of public servants that are addressing uh, wonderful things. Uh, permit systems, online permit systems, uh, emergency vehicle, uh, management, uh, simple things like um, uh, registers for uh, uh, procurement plans, for clinics uh, that KZN developed uh, so that all of these can be dealt with in a paperless environment. Um, Chair, in terms of just one other comment, in terms of the um, uh, working with the provinces further, we work very closely with the offices of the Premier. Um, but also then with departments that do approach us in terms of either solutions that they have, that we replicate, uh, even institutions like hospitals or um, clinics, um, and, uh, and then help uh, re replicate that across the public service. Lastly, on the skills, we also work with PCTA to do uh, a little bit forward-looking uh, in terms of what skills the public service would need. And those may not always be qualifications. We know that data skills and uh, data management skills will become very important. And those are not necessarily university degree skills, um, as is with IOTs, the Internet of Things. Uh, those are sometimes very technical skills uh, that we are working with uh, our counterparts in terms of alerting them to the kind of opportunities that are um, possible. Uh, hence, our organization also investing in uh, foresight capacity so that we are better prepared also to deal uh, with uh, anticipated crises um, that are coming our way. Uh, AED, I hope I um, covered everything. I don't know if there's something else you all want me to, to address. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Pierre, for covering the points I was going to talk to, uh, but I see you've covered uh, the last two questions that were not answered. Uh, thank you, Chairperson, for, for the opportunity for us to respond. I must say, we found the discussions quite uh, uh, rich in terms of probing and so forth, and we've learned a lot from engaging with the select committee. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, uh, uh, Acting uh, Executive Director. Uh, I've seen uh, two hands. I want to believe that uh, this uh, will be follow up. Uh, Honorable Matevula, is this an old hand? Thank you very much, Chair. It's an old hand. I'm covered. Thank you. Thank you. Honorable uh, Chair. Thank you very much, uh, Chair. Thanks to TM uh, for the response and uh, the team. Um, I just want to 
with regard to the the, the reputation uh, at uh, at uh, Prince Mshieni Hospital, um, uh, my 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 issue is that uh, the 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 problem of uh, litigation is a, a problem that is facing most hospital. Uh, I'm worried that uh, in one financial year, only one hospital uh, has been involved in the replication uh, program. Uh, what are what plans uh, is the NDG having? to ensure that uh, all the other hospitals, uh, they are, uh, they, they, there's a replication programs also uh, in those hospitals. Thank you, Chair. Thank, thank you, thank you, Honorable Kai. Uh, acting Executive Director. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Thank you, Honorable Member, for, for, for that question. Actually, I, I wanted to mention to the Select Committee that uh, through our strategy, we really realized that we need to, to replicate wider than one um, site. What we're planning to do is that uh, in the next financial year, we want to work in uh, districts that have been uh, within the district development model so that when we work within a district, then we are able to sort of uh, go wider than one side. So currently we didn't have any plans with this uh, particular uh, solution, but since uh, Honorable Member is raised it, we'll make sure that this solution is one of the suite of solutions that we are going to implement into in the two districts that we are going to work in. So that as CPSI, we are seen to be contributing to the DDM. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, uh, Acting Executive Director. Uh, let me uh, hand over to the DM, just last word, uh, before we continue with our in-house things while we allow the team to, to excuse us. Over to you, DM. No, thank you very much, Chairperson, and we thank you for this opportunity to account to the select committee and therefore to the people of South Africa. Um, we've taken note of the issues that you have raised, Chair, um, and rightfully so for that matter. And, 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 and we'll be looking into them. We will be looking at everything that we're doing so that we see where there's need for amendments, we will amend. Um, I think they will respond on the issue of replication in one hospital and not others. As, as, as it has been asked, but I really want to thank you again for this opportunity. Uh, we are not, we are old in the department, but not as old as all that. So with each interaction with you, we learn something. And thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, dear. Again, let me on behalf of the, of the uh, committee uh, uh, express our appreciation uh, for the uh, a good work that the center is doing under your leadership. Uh, we are looking forward to uh, uh, future engagement in terms of uh, uh, the uh, a further uh, uh, work on of the center, uh, particularly with regard to the point raised around expanding uh, uh, to to other districts in terms of the district development uh, model, which is uh, the. The, the, uh, the running uh, cry uh, around, uh, I mean, around around the, the government. So, from our side as the committee, we will be uh, interested to get a sense in terms of across the 44 district. Uh, how far are we? But uh, again, uh, your clean audit uh, is, 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 is uh, uh, stepping in the right direction. Uh, keep up the good work. You must continue. Uh, showing that indeed uh, clean audit is possible, like we have done in the last three years. Thank you, uh, DM and the team. You are excused. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Thanks, Honorable Members. Bye bye. Thank you. Uh, honorable Members, we have uh, uh, two sets of minutes that we need to, to deal with. Uh, is the minutes of the 17th of February and the minutes of the, the 24th of February. 
On the 17th of February, we hosted the Construction Industry Development Board, uh, where they, where they uh, presented to us uh, in terms of uh, uh, they are, they are, they are work. Uh, uh, I want to believe that uh, members had an opportunity to go through those minutes. Let's uh, get a sense uh, from the uh, attendance, uh, whether if we left out any member that attended. Uh, those are uh, members of the committee that attended on the 17th of February. Uh, uh, I move uh, for adoption, Chairperson. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Can it Hello? go back to, to, to the people who were, to the attendance? And let's go back to the attendance, uh, 17th of February. Honorable uh, Plenty? Yes. Are you, are you happy? Or we are left no. by mistake? No, I don't see myself there. All right. Uh, I did not miss any. Yes, yes. I did, not miss, I did not miss any meeting this day, so I don't know why Thank my name you. is not there. <laughs> Thank you. We'll, we'll correct that. Let's 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 Please. ask uh, the team to correct that. Uh, and I want to believe that with that correction, uh, you you Sir, uh, I just want to make a correction. I just want to make a correction. Yes, on on five point three, um, it says in. In terms of the reported employment equity stati statistics, the committee not with concern that there is an underrepresentation of Indians and persons living with a disability. It must take out a living. Uh, it is not uh, politically correct. We don't say uh, people yeah. with disability are mm -hmm. people living with disability. Uh, but also just uh, up. Uh, just a small uh, grammatical error uh, that uh, the the first I think the first paragraph yes and and after apologies the one that says the chairperson of the board Mr B J Nopunga uh, if you go down it says the RSR had aligned its strategy goals and objective to ensure that all rail industry activities were completed with safety as a main consideration. Further, in the year under review, the RSR continued to prioritize, that prioritize uh, you should take out uh, D. All right, thank you, thank you. Yeah, let's yeah, ask I, I second, I second uh, the adoption of the minutes. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Yes. Uh, Before the minutes are adopted, there is something missing from the minutes. And that yes. is that, <clears throat> I um, I requested the presenter at the time. I cannot remember the name, unfortunately. Um, a lot of the, members, uh, let's, just, just, let's just get clarity. Uh, are we dealing with the minutes of the 7th? I thought we were dealing with the minutes of the 17th. Or this is the minutes? Let's check. Let's go up. Yeah, it's a 17th, chair. Yes, it's it's the 17th. of the 17th. Yeah. yeah. Oh, no, you are, you are correct. Yeah, no, it's fine. Yes, Tim? Let's 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 um, let's thank you the team to the concern raised by Honorable. No, I, I, I just I clearly recall in those in those in, in that engagement that I asked the presenter for the 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 statistics on manual authorizations. And they were given up to the end of twenty nineteen. And the presenter undertook to give us the statistics on manual authorizations for the year 2020, up to where we are now, or up to the date of that meeting. And so if it can just be minuted, maybe right at the end, that the, the, the committee has requested the statistics on manual authorizations from the rail safety, from the RSR, um, up to February 2020 just so that we can note down that we did request that. There was no objection to that request. So if we can just note that we did request those statistics because Chair, those statistics are very important in terms of rail safety. And they give an indication of how the system's working because manual authorizations are only used when the system is broken. So that's why it's important for us to know that. <clears throat> 
Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, uh, uh, Tim. Uh, I want to I want to believe that uh, we that it means we need to make a correction of uh, because I see the contents if I'm if if, if, if honourable members are aware uh, under comments uh, the, and also the remarks by the chair it's a rail safety regulator but now. Uh, under agenda is briefing by the CIDB uh, on its annual report. Can, 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 can the committee secretary just explain what is happening there? You can also check a chair under 5.6. Under 5.6, yes. Mm. Secretary? Secretary? Sure, Oh, I want to believe that uh, you need to make correction uh, on the briefing because it's briefing by the by the uh, rail safety regulator. Chairperson, uh, yes, let's say that on the front page. I've just done a word. Can you hear me? I think the, 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 yes, the file yes. is saved as CRDB. Uh, I, I'm not sure because the minute that at least I've presented here. On the screen oh. is talking about you know the rail safety regulate on the seventh. Oh, I, 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 I suspect hey, that, <coughs> I suspect that the one that may I assist? Jeez, yes, if yes. I may assist, I, I think the file, the file that was sent us was saved incorrectly as the CRDB report. Yes, yeah, maybe right. that 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 farm must just be renamed in the database. <laughs> Great. Okay. Well, thank you. With, with the correction made, uh, uh, Honorable Dango moved for the adoption of the minutes. Uh, can you get a second? I second, sir. Thank you, thank you, Honorable Hai. Uh, the minutes, therefore, of the 17th of February are duly adopted. Can we then move to the minutes of the 24th of February? Uh, let's uh, wait for the committee secretary to let them. Uh, the attendance, uh, are we happy? Uh, there you are, honorable Apleni. This time, this time <laughs> you are duly <laughs> <you are Julie, laughs> included. <laughs> Do the members? Uh, any, any correction? On the remarks, uh, this was a briefing by the uh, Ports Regulator of South Africa on its annual report. Uh, are we happy with uh, how the uh, uh, comments and deliberation uh, is captured, which uh, indeed uh, is the thrust of uh, the input that the members made? Yes, Chair, I will move for the minutes. Thank you, thank you, Honorable Pratisa. Can you get a second? Thank you, Chair, Honorable Mushodi, a second. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Honorable Mushodi, for seconding. Therefore, the minutes of the 24th of February are actually adopted. Okay, can, uh, I just we... check, uh, can I just check uh, if uh, we have received the, the written responses? If you remember, we were. Yes for the budget uh, speech on that uh, 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 afternoon. Uh, but then you, some, you, you suggested to uh, the, the board chairperson and the CEO that uh, the, the questions that were not uh, responded to should be responded to in writing. Just want to check if uh, uh, we have received the responses. Thanks. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank uh, you. Honorable uh, Committee Secretary. Thank you, Chairperson. So far, we haven't received any requested information from the entity. Okay. Then can I will can... make a follow thank up you, with the department in that regard. Thank you, thank you, thank you, uh, Committee Secretary, uh, for committing to to making a follow up on the uh, uh, responses that were not given on that day because of the pressure that we had. Uh, honorable members, the this brings us to the 
to the last uh, item on the agenda, which is uh, closure. Allow me to take this opportunity to indeed express uh, uh, our appreciation uh, to the job well done by uh, honorable members in terms of uh, uh, holding uh, indeed the, the, the Center for Innovation, the public service uh, accountable. Uh, they are on the right track and uh, I think we must uh, keep on uh, uh, holding them to, 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 to uh, hold the fort. What is quite important is uh, it's, 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 uh, it's the commitment that the honorable members are displaying uh, in terms of ensuring that our meeting at all times uh, are, are not uh, cancelled because of lack of quorum. We have never anticipated or encountered that. So therefore, I think uh, uh, your discipline must be commended. And also the team, uh, the committee secretary and the researcher and the uh, assistant uh, committee secretary uh, for ensuring that at all times we have uh, the material on time uh, to do thorough preparations. Therefore, honorable members, the meeting is therefore adjourned. Thank you, honorable members. Thank you very much, honorable chair. Thank, thank you, chair. Thank you, chair. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Whip, 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 whip. you are enjoying your mafite. Uh, hey. Thank you, chairs. Chairs. Chair. Chair. Yes. Hello, uh, chair. Hello, you hello. Go for now, immediately after this. Oh, hey, Lebda. Yeah, very good. Very good. Thank you. Go, go, go for now, after this. All right, suppose. Thanks. Sure.